Theodore Roosevelt, Thomas Jefferson. What do you know about them? Well, you already know that they were both president, and you probably already know that they stand next to each other, forever silent and resolute, at Mount Rushmore. They were both vigorous writers. Thomas Jefferson wrote 20,000 letters in the course of his life, Theodore Roosevelt, 150,000. And of course, at the core of every great writer is a great reader. At its peak, Jefferson's personal library housed over 6,500 volumes. Theodore Roosevelt, it is said, read on average a book a day. Although they became president just about 100 years apart from each other, you would not be blamed for assuming that some sort of transcendental bond united these exalted figures together. Perhaps you would think that a special affinity or respect would be afforded, at least from the later visage of Theodore Roosevelt toward that of the former, Jefferson, on the basis of the unique position each shared and occupied. However, this was decidedly not the case. Theodore Roosevelt despised Thomas Jefferson. In an 1896 letter to Frederick Jackson Turner, Roosevelt wrote, In my estimation, Jefferson's influence upon the United States as a whole was very distinctly evil, and, still more, he represented, without influencing, the very tendencies which have made for evil in our character. Those are some extraordinarily harsh claims. Let's discuss further why Roosevelt felt the way he did, and get down to the truth of exactly I think the reasons that Theodore Roosevelt hated Thomas Jefferson can be broken down and sorted into three categories. The first being political ideology, the second is foreign policy, and the third is character. As to the first, political ideology, the fact of the matter is that Theodore Roosevelt and Jefferson had polar opposite philosophies. Jefferson argued that power should not be centralized, but instead should be diffused through as many hands as possible. On the Constitution, he was a strict constructionist, meaning that he believed a judge's job was to read the text of the document only as written. There should be no room for interpretation, and of course, courts should never act as legislatures, writing laws unaccountable to the people. Roosevelt, in contrast, believed in strengthening the powers of an expanded federal government. He thought the Constitution must never act as a straitjacket, and that the process of amending it was far too arduous to ever be considered reliable. In short, Roosevelt was of the opinion that because power derived ultimately from the people, the laws were there to serve them and their right to self-rule. During his 1912 campaign, Roosevelt even flaunted his openness to the idea of judicial recall, or the idea that voters retained the right to repeal laws through popular referendum. Jefferson would have been horrified of what Roosevelt stood for. For his part, Roosevelt regarded Jefferson and his ideas as irrelevant relics of a bygone era. Roosevelt's time was an age of empire, of industrialization, and of technological revolution. The Jeffersonian idea of a farmer's republic seemed to Roosevelt embarrassingly retrograde. Roosevelt was a Hamilton man, tracing a political genealogy from him to John Marshall, to his personal hero, Abraham Lincoln, and to Roosevelt himself. Likewise, in Roosevelt's view, there was a direct continuity between people like Jefferson, James Madison, John C. Calhoun, and contemporary Democrats like William Jennings Bryan. As it pertains to foreign policy, Roosevelt once again differed from and disapproved of Jefferson. When Roosevelt was 23 years old, he published his first book, The Naval War of 1812. In it, among other things, Roosevelt introduced what would become a cornerstone of his foreign policy views preparedness. Simply put, Roosevelt believed that the best defense was a good offense, and in the context of the War of 1812, a war which began over national honor and the preservation of maritime rights, to Roosevelt, Jefferson's decision to shrink the American Navy and focus on smaller defensive boats was appalling. Roosevelt writes, We have never seen a more pitiful exhibition of weakness at home, or a greater mixture of blustering insolence and incapacity in reference to affairs abroad than was shown under Jefferson and Madison. Roosevelt would go on to blame, in essence, the War of 1812 and its troubles on Jefferson and his short-sighted isolationist tendencies. Now, let's delve into Roosevelt's assessment of Jefferson's character. Unsurprisingly, this is pretty negative as well. Roosevelt described Jefferson as helpless and characterized him as a hypocrite, 
for supporting slavery for blacks while simultaneously proclaiming inherent self-evident rights for whites. To be fair to Jefferson, his position on slavery was a little more nuanced. Jefferson believed that slavery represented one of the greatest threats to the continued success of the American experiment, and genuinely tried to limit and ban its practice in his home state of Virginia, obviously to no success. However, because Jefferson recognized the need to eliminate slavery on the societal scale, but at the same time never attempted to free his own slaves of his own volition, it is indeed difficult to say that Jefferson was not a man of contradiction. In that vein, another Jefferson contradiction Roosevelt picked up on was his actions as president. Quote, Jefferson, I think, was, not even excepting Buchanan, the most incompetent chief executive we ever had, and whose well-nigh solitary service as president to his country, the acquisition of Louisiana, was rendered by adopting the Federalist principles which he had most fiercely denounced. Ouch. Okay. We have pretty clearly established that Roosevelt didn't like Jefferson. So what, though? Does it even matter? Of course. The differences between these two figures, the paths they took, and the ideas they stood for, are timeless. The debate over how to read the Constitution still animates law to this day. The battle over how the U.S. should orient itself in global matters is a fraught point of contention, even within each political party. Questions about freedom and power, about individual rights and the charter of government, these are all perennial inquiries that will continue to inspire the passions of generations of Americans. Let's end this video on a somewhat positive note. Though Theodore Roosevelt did not have a high opinion of, nor kind words for, Thomas Jefferson, he was nevertheless capable of crediting his predecessor, even if only mildly, writing about Jefferson. He did thoroughly believe in the people, just as Abraham Lincoln did, a prerequisite to doing the work well. In the second place, Jefferson believed in the West and in the expansion of our people westward, whereas the Northeastern Federalists allowed themselves to get into a position of utter hostility to Western expansion. I think that marks a good place as any to conclude things. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good one. <laughs>